Uh, good morning, and, uh, Minister. I wish to, from the outset, that I do not condone drink driving. I suppose that nearly everyone here, every member of this hall, I say, do not condone drink driving. And the current laws in place should be strongly enforced by our Gardaí and judicial system. Of course, any debt which occurs on our roads is one debt too many. This point is particularly true when we consider the lives we have lost as a result of drunk driving. Um, I just want to also want to point out to you, Minister, that your own co- the joint committee that you are in front of, the joint committee on transport, tools, and sport, for its consideration, which you were in front of for days, which was recommended from here. And I just want to re- read out this based on the evidence presented today. Some members of the joint committee believe that the proposed amendments to the penalties ap- ap- applicable to drink driving could possibly be regarded as disproportionate, and I think that word disproportionate is very important, particularly so in rural areas of the county, of the country, where access to public transport services is limited. I think that's thing, one thing you, have to, you never talk on board, Minister. It's rural land, and I'm a rural deputy, and I want to speak for a rural deputy, and uh, as a rural deputy, I represent the people. Uh, it is disproportionate. The laws that were there up till now were, were sufficient, but implement them. Uh, to stop anything. And, and uh, current legislation makes it illegal to drink and drive. That's what I'm trying to say. Bina Fall introduced mandatory testing and supported the legislation that decreased the alcohol limits to one of the lowest in Europe. This latest proposal from yourself, Minister, is to introduce an automatic disqualification of three months for those thrown driving with a blood alcohol of 50 to 80 mgs. Currently, this offence is punishable with three penalty points provided that the driver is not a learner or professional driver, and that they have not been found guilty of the same offence within the last three years. And I think that covers a lot. The Minister is portraying this bill as a catch-all bill, which will prevent more people from drinking and driving. Fianna Fáil does not control drinking and driving, as I said already, and nor are we prisoners to the Venture Federation, as the Minister has wrongly alleged. And I, I refute that as if I stand up here when I speak for the people I represent for rural land and being told that I'm a spokesman for a uh, defence association as if I was on the payroll. I refuse that, refute that and deny that and I, I hate being branded as someone that speaks for defence because I want to express my opinion for the people who I represent in, in Kilkenny and rural land. We believe that there needs to be stronger enforcement of existing laws as well as ways to address the full range of causes for road deaths. This was highlighted by a recent Pride Time programme last Monday night, which found that current legislation governing drink driving is not for enforced consistently, and that was worth looking at. I saw it myself. I happen to be at home to see it, which I, I often miss these programmes. And that proved a point in that programme alone by an RTE. Social isolation rural Ireland, I want to speak to him. In my opinion, the government does not understand how rural Ireland operates or the damage this legislation can do in rural Ireland. And I, I refer that to yourself, Minister. I know you're from Dublin, you're urbanised, but I don't think you really understand what this means in rural Ireland and what we have to listen to people and what they say. Again, I want to strongly state, as I said already, I do not control drink driving because I have to keep saying that. But the proposals the governments are bringing forward in respect of the road traffic amendment bill will make it impossible for people to go to a rural pub. In an awful lot of cases, it is their only social outlet, and that's important too. Only social outlet. People that on a Friday always did it traditionally came down with their wives, come down from four or five miles up in rural Ireland, up lanes and things, came down as a social outlet. Uh, uh, for uh, a social outlet, collect their pensions, maybe, collect whatever they're getting out of the post office, did their bit of shopping, the husband or maybe the wife went in, had a drink, social out, met people and uh, had a chat, and then went home and do no harm to no one. And we're going to just stop all that by this rule that you're trying to bring in. They may have got behind the wheel of a car to go to work the morning after, but, few, but the new focus on testing in the morning will make this impossible to do so. I mean, the morning after, people do everything, if they do everything right, even get taxes home if they have taxes, and then the morning after, they try to go to work, and the guardie are out to check them. That's another issue in rural land, a very important thing. Of course, it would be ideal that people in the very remote parts of rural land could rely on transport, public transport in particular, to get to work, but they can't. That's the, that's the reality. We can't rely on the loose that regular bus, buses going by the door or even taxis in some cases. Even in the biggest provision towns around the country, if you are out late, you must rely on a good taxi man to take you home without charging your fortune. If you are serious about rural regeneration, you will not enforce laws that will confine older people to their homes and put small rural pubs and bars out of business. 
One of the few remaining employers of young people who will also be driven out of rural communities if you can work and socialise at 6 pm uh, after 6 pm at night. There are no proposals from government about increasing the number of checkpoints by Gardaí. Given the recent breath of laser test debacle, and we all know about that, the public need to know that the government is serious about Garda presence on our roads to prevent and detect drink driving and to decrease speeding. I was watching the debate again, as I said, which took place at this issue, issue yesterday morning, and was shocked by issues which were read into record by my colleague, Deputy Eugene Murphy. He said that he came across a figure while researching this issue and showed that as of this year, the number of Garda in the traffic core was just 663 which is a decrease, a decrease of 400 Gardaí. There is an issue, Minister, uh, 663, and a decrease of 443 Gardaí in the traffic core. Uh, that's an issue should be looked at. And Deputy Murphy is correct with what he said about the speed vans. In many respects, people have used the speed vans as a way of saying, we do not need them, but of course we need checkpoints, because speed vans will not detect drunken drivers. And that's a known fact. Most fatal collisions where alcohol is a contributory factor involve drivers where the blood alcohol content is higher than 100 mg. So we're talking about the country else that goes in and has one drink, maybe a small, as we used to call it, a half and a small bottle, maybe a bottle of stout. And then you're talking about drunken drivers that are plastered and shouldn't be behind the wheel. No law to stop that unless it's enforced by the Gardaí. These are drivers that should face much higher sanctions. Evidence suggests that closing these loopholes and strengthening provisions should be a far more effective means of saving lives for this reason alone. In the United Kingdom, it is mandatory for high-risk offenders, including those found with repetitive tests of greater than 200 mg's, and repeat offenders to pass a medical examination before getting the licence back. And maybe that's the road we should be going, rather than we're going down now. A further study from the European Road Safety Observatory was highlighted that alcohol ignition interlocks, which prevent a person from starting the car, now maybe this is a bit technical, but starting the car when they're over the age limit, are 40 to 95% more effective in preventing drink driving than traditional measures such as licence withdrawals or fines. We will be bringing, Fianna Fáil will be bringing formal legislation to have alcohol uh, locks, ignition locks installed in the cars of severe first time offenders uh, and in all second time offenders. Punishment will, lead, will mean little to people if they do not feel that they will be caught. There has to be more gather, as I said, more gather checkpoints to enforce the law that's there now, and that's what we want. Given the sorry state of Ireland's enforcement mechanism when it comes to drink driving, this is hardly a surprise. Recent controversies over falsified breathalyzed tests have revealed the hollow nature of this government's rhetoric on alcohol related road offences. While the final figure has yet to be confirmed, it now seems that perhaps more than one million breathalyzed tests were faked and were after we through all this. Where is the credibility in any regime following this level of falsification? Even when convictions do occur, the risk of losing one's licence is clearly meaningless. If a person is disqualified already, or if a person knows that the punishment will not be fallen forward. Of the 206 drivers involved in a fatal alcohol related collision, 41 drivers were disqualified in that incident. Of 206, 41 drivers are already disqualified, uh, uh, of, uh, disqualified off the road. This represents almost a fifth of the case covered. There is clearly a gap between deterrence on paper and in the real world. No amount of automatic disqualification will deter people if they do not feel that the punishment will be enforced. While disqualified drivers are obliged to return the licence to the Road Safety Authority, 98% of them do not so. So the disqualified in court and the 98% is never the licence are never even taken off them. They have the licence and hold them. 98%. That's a statistics unbelievable. So how do we enforce something when the courts don't even take the licence and take it away after they've been committed? And yet they can have them licensed for 98% of them. This is a disgrace. It is no wonder we have so many disqualified drivers on the road when you consider that the overwhelming majority of them do not have the licence, as I say, confiscated. We support, we support increased dependence for driving while disqualified as follow. We support increasing the maximum prison sentence from six months to two years and the maximum fine from 5,000 to 15,000. This is for people that, uh, that continuously uh, keep going. This will ensure that punishment is appropriate for repeat offenders under this law. We also support allocating in increased resources to the RSA Road Safety Authority for the management of this system and the increased enforcement. 
I can understand why the Minister has not yet moved on the funding imbalance in favour of urban bus services as against rural bus services, or why he has not modernised bus services in rural Ireland. Well, that's another issue. Uh, if I won't enforce all these laws, why are we not giving some kind of a service to look after people? This would be a step uh, one in really wanted to, if he really wants to provide for a better quality of life for the people of rural communities. This government has not been active on, pol on policy for this area. This is not a matter for the National Transport Authority uh, or tra uh, Transport Infrastructure Ireland, but for the Minister and the Government, for you, Minister, and the Government. We had inadequate, inadequate public transport services in rural Ireland. People, no, if we had adequate public transport services in rural Ireland, people would not have the option to put the car keys in the drawer and make use of an alternative mode of transport to go home or go to work the morning after having a few drinks. The, the Rural Link Transport Network is currently activated during the day. We should, urge, urge, we should urgently seek to investigate the viability of enhancing this network and making it available to people at peak times during the night and weekdays and weekends. The current uh, social fabric of rural land is very strained and I would view the expansion of the Rural Link Transport Network, network, network as a socially positive policy and I would ask the Minister to strongly consider this. Education is another thing I think, Minister, we need. Between 2008 and 2012, 39% of drivers involved in fatal collisions where alcohol was a factor were aged between 15 and 24. That's a statistic that's very alarming too. This means that we continue to fail our young people and that we're not getting through to them on the dangers of drink driving. During Crescent Sessions in February 9, 2007, yourself, Minister, admitted that the education piece on road safety has not been as effective as we might hope, and yet you have failed to address this. In Ireland, we do not have a mandatory driver safety programme that covers the dangers of drink driving. While this is an optional module for transitioning your students, it is far from universal. Only 70% 7 7 of students are enrolled in transition year, and it is up to schools whether to feature a driver's safety programme. The RSA Road Safety Authority has also highlighted that young people need to be educated on drink driving for a younger age and that of transitioning your students, young people typically begin to drink when they are around 14, 15 years old. And that's where we should educate them, Minister. At that stage, we should make it mandatory or compulsory at secondary level schools and transition year that uh, during the, in the transition year that they get a course on, this, on safety and road safety and drink driving, etc. etc. Fianna Fáil will be bringing forward uh, a number of amendments to do, to do this. We are proposing that the current penalty fine sanction of three to, three increased to five and that the fine is doubled to €500. Euro. And I think that would be turned enough for anyone between 50 and 100 MGs, we are, or 50 and 80. We also support increased penalties for those found driving with, a, um, a, with a, 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 in excess of 100 MGs as these drivers are responsible for eight in ten fatal road collisions involving alcohol. We also support increasing the penalties for those breaking a driving disqualification who account for around a fifth of fatal collisions involved in road collisions. To show our good faith and intention of the issue, Fianna Fáil believes the Minister should accept the compromise of the justice, which is the five penalty fines should be given to a person with an alcohol level of between 50 and 80 MPs per 100 ml. And Minister, I haven't even spoken about the rural Ireland and the, the mental prom, uh, problems out there, the isolation. They are important things as well. We never look at these things. People, are, as I said, are in rural houses and rural homes and, and uh, have, have no uh, outlet, only only to go to the local, local, um, the local town, the local village, and meet people. And if they're going to be afraid and frightened, rural isolation is already an issue. Uh, uh, suicide is, is, is a problem in rural Ireland. And all these things, and these laws are bringing in, we're become the nanny state. We're dictating how they live their lives. We're telling them what they can do, what they can't do. We're frightening people. We're frightening them in every way of life. And I am asking you that this is the core measures don't necessarily mean anything. I know you don't understand the Minister because you're not from the rural areas, but if you're in rural areas and see what happens every day on, on rural people living four and five miles from town, would get an opportunity to come in, meet people, socialise, have a drink if necessary, one or two things. I'm not people going in uh, having a, a flutter of drinking and then try to drive home. I'm talking about people coming in for a social aspect. We're not taking that on board. We also are not taking on board the morning after where people do the right thing the night before and go home and get their taxes home and then try to get to work the morning after and make a living and to keep going. And we're not doing that either. And I think the Ministry should reconsider this. I mean, maybe it's a bit late in the day now, but I'm asking you to take all these things on board and to reconsider, reconsider where, we are, um, um, where we are in this bill. 
um, sorry. Uh, the, yeah, another issue then is the conditional roads. Uh, you know, I mean, we can talk about different rural problems that are out there. Conditional roads, you know, people. I, I spoke about the bus service. I spoke about having a rural bus service. You can't do it. I know you can't have a bus service that can go up every lane and every boreen in the rural island. But you can have some kind of a bus service from, from village to village that would help people to, to alleviate the problems they have. And, if, if, uh, and I don't think this legislation has been part, uh, taught out enough and, and been worked to enough. And I'm asking you, would you again? reconsider what we're asking and take all this on board. Uh, um, you know, we, we are, we, uh, I don't like voting against legislation and drink driving. I don't like uh, supporting anyone that's to be drinking in a, in a, in a, in, and driving a car, but I'm talking about the minimal thing that we need. And I think the laws we had and the, and the freedom of all brought in before are adequate to look after anyone between 50 and 80 MGs, and I must the Minister consider that. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Oh, a minute. A minute. Well, well you, have, you have four minutes, but you have only one minute tonight. I have only one minute left. Is no. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I asked already, Minister, I asked about uh, rural Ireland, and I also asked about the crime and, and, uh, and what happens in crime. I've spoken about this on several occasions. Cameras, I'm always speaking about this. About, uh, I know this moved away from drinking driving, but it's another issue in rural Ireland. And, and people, uh, um, thieves coming from the cities and from big cities and coming and, and frightening rural people. Robin has happened in Tipperary. We had, we had it last, last, um, last week, we saw it, or last month, we saw it in Tipperary. We saw it happen. Uh, we had it in Kenny, in my own area, Kilkenny, we saw people coming off the CCTV cameras. I've asked us several times that they be looked at again and to, to keep people well, safe in their home and give people credibility. Uh, as it's uh, quarter past eleven, by order of the House, I ask you to move the adjournment. I move the adjournment. Ta and Dal Arachlo Bajji, Yanya Jai.